Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Uh, we're going to take a look on today's uh, instructional video. We're going to look at snow forecast maps. They are all over the place on social media. They are oftentimes put up there with no context, so they can be misunderstood uh, in, in many ways. I think they are grossly misused uh, because they're just kind of thrown up there to show you a big, impressive number. And then you, you don't really know, well, what does it really mean? Uh, why uh, does it have a, a, an 18-inch number print over my, my general area when the forecasts are a lot different? So let, let's go through a few of the tools that are out there. Uh, we'll tell you what the maps mean and what they don't mean. One of the big problems that happens is uh, when you have two systems that are coming within a very, very short period of time. So we'll, uh, we're gonna start off uh, with the National Weather Service's uh, snowfall forecast map. This is an example of a, a snow forecast. And you can get, get these maps, by the way, fairly easily by just going to uh, digitalweather.weather.gov. Okay, that's digital.weather.gov. And you wind up with uh, this interactive screen, uh, and that interactive screen is uh, a, you're able to do all sorts of adjusting here in terms of the time frame. So what we have here is an example of the um, uh, of two systems coming back to back, and right across the top here you can see the menu, uh, and you can zoom in as tight as you'd like. And what your the numbers that are plotted here are National Weather Service forecasts. Uh, of their uh, amounts. Uh, so uh, you, you have them laid out all on one map, you can get a pretty good picture as to where things are going to be going uh, in the long term. And by the way, there are other things on the menu that you can access, uh, including hazards, temperature, apparent temperature, which we wind chill or the heat index, uh, the dew point, relative humidity, and so on. And you want to go down always to where it says new snow a total new snow. And in the instance, by the way, where you're dealing with sleet or freezing rain, you're going to want to use the new ice option. So we're going to start with the uh, total new snow option. Here's a situation where this area is being impacted by two uh, separate systems within a 48-hour uh, time frame. So you can scroll uh, across the top here. You can scroll the uh, time and date that you want and the map will uh, reload, uh, will load, and then you'll get to see your snow amount. So here we have uh, amounts of one to two inches in general. The problem comes when you have that second system. And when we load up the second system, we've got amounts of four, five, six, seven inches. Now, the problem here is that it includes the one to two inches that were forecast from the first system. So you have to manually uh, subtract numbers here. You're going to have to manually subtract uh, the snow amounts uh, down. So the uh, amounts that you're seeing on here uh, in some areas where you've got these six, sevens, and eights are actually going to be more along the lines of four, five, and six. Now in that first map, you have uh, the area that we showed you that was in New York and in southern New England where there was no snow from the first event. So these numbers are actually real time. So it's very important when you look at any of these things, uh, make sure that you check the timestamp and make sure that you're not dealing with two systems. The timestamp is on the bottom, total new snow through Wednesday, February 13th, 1 a.m. It doesn't mean that it snows nonstop uh, from one time period to another. That you'd have to go deeper into the specific forecast in order to find that out. The uh, other area where you uh, get uh, uh, you see and you get big confusion from is when we use these weather models, and this is of course from tropicaltidbits.com, uh, which I think is a you know a wonderful site and I use all the time. So here's an example of snowfall amounts. That, the maps that you saw, by the way now are coming off these models. And this is the model's forecast for total snow. But notice that it says includes sleet. So it basically assumes that all the precip falls as snow and sleet. Uh, you get uh, a 10 to 1 ratio, which is 
an inch of rain equals 10 inches of snow. And then you just do the math and the model does the math and plots all these numbers. And you'll notice that in the numbers where we saw the weather service with their total snowfalls in the four to eight inch uh, range are up here in the 14, 14, 15, 16 inch range. So the big problem with these maps is the fact that it doesn't account for uh, sleet or freezing rain. And if you have a weather situation where that is an issue, these numbers are not at all realistic. You can access those maps, by the way, if you go to uh, on the side menu, uh, if you click on precipitation and moisture, and you click total snowfall 10 to 1. Now, a better tool might be to use uh, what the one button underneath it, which is the positive snow growth map. And this is supposed to take into account sleet or freezing rain. And you can see the numbers here are much lower and and, and definitely much more realistic uh, considering uh, the weather situation that you might be in. If sleet and freezing rain are not an issue, uh, then, of course, you know, that 10 to 1 might work better. And the positive snow growth map will probably match up fairly well. Also, on uh, this particular model, the NAM model, uh, you will have, uh, when you look at the options here, uh, you have uh, total snowfall and total positive uh, snow depth. But again, here's a situation where we have two weather systems going on. So you need to subtract the numbers out from the first one for your particular area. If we take a look, for example, at the GFS snow maps, same thing holds. Of course, that model has a different view of what, um, uh, a slightly different view and for the same time frame in terms of how much uh, snow is going to accumulate. This is the positive snow growth map again. But there's an option here called 24-hour snowfall. And we'll bring that up. And you can see on this one, that it actually breaks it down a bit. It's a moving target. So in some places, the snow ends in one time frame, it's going to disappear and then reappear at the other in the other time frame. So check your time across the top here. This is this particular map is for is valid for the 36-hour forecast period uh, that ends on Tuesday, February 12th, Greenwich Mean Time zero Z. That's midnight Greenwich time. You want to subtract five hours from that if you're on standard time, four hours if you're on daylight uh, saving time. And that is from the first system. Then that moves out. And then you can go to the next 24-hour time frame. And you can see ending for 7 o'clock Tuesday night. That's 0Z Wednesday, Greenwich Bean Time, midnight Wednesday uh, of February 13th, which would be 7 p.m on Tuesday, February 12th, and you can see the amounts that are generated here, 24 hours. Again, make sure you know what you're looking at, assuming 10 to 1 snow liquid ratio. So this does not, this particular map does not take into account uh, whether you have sleet or freezing rain. I always break it down. So I have broken this down separately in terms of my personal forecast, which may be different from what the models are showing, and oftentimes they are. Uh, there's uh, local climatology adjustments, the stuff that I know that I've learned over the years. I know where to cut these things down and when to add to them, or at least I try to know when they when to do that. But uh, here you have, for example, my forecast for a lead event that comes in about 24 hours ahead of the second event, and then I have the second event broken out separately. When you read posts or if you are watching um, videos, uh, be sure you pay close attention to what is being put out there. Uh, oftentimes the message gets lost. Uh, I have put posts up on social media where I have specifically said this is for a given time frame uh, and is separate from another weather system, particularly where one looks like it's stronger than the other. So the stronger one is probably getting more attention than the weaker one. Uh, I can't tell you how many times that I've made that distinction and yet people always seem to make the same mistake. So read, listen, and don't pull up a model forecast map and uh, take it as gospel uh, because virtually all the time it is going to be uh, incorrect. It's a great tool to, if you want to see where you think the general area of snow is going to be. But it's not that good 
when it comes to specifically nailing exact amounts. So uh, that'll wrap it up. Uh, thanks for being here. For those of you who want are interested in perhaps uh, a more extensive weather experience, you can have more of these uh, types of instructional videos as well as uh, all the latest on uh, what's going on weather-wise. I cover the area from eastern Pennsylvania to southern New England and everybody in between, and that includes New Jersey, New York City, Long Island, the Hudson Valley, uh, and Connecticut. You can uh, go to my uh, weather platform on Patreon. I have links uh, on here on the descriptor to this video, and it's just two dollars a month, and you get a lot of extra weather coverage, members-only live streams. You can message me at any time for any questions, and it's particularly useful for those of you who uh, use weather in your day-to-day decision making. So, uh, hope you take a look at that. Otherwise, I do also have my free weather app, which is available on, for all mobile devices. Uh, you can download that. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee, and you can find that on Google Play or in the App Store. Have a great day and uh, look for more instructional videos to come.